What have these two outfits in common? They both feature a corset. That's how versatile corsets are. The way I'm making a corset top is more the modern fashion way and not historically accurate, so keep that in mind. If you want to follow along, the pattern is available on my Patreon. Hello and welcome! I'm Maren and on this channel I show you how to create beautiful and practical pieces for your wardrobe. Let's talk about materials. So for a corset top you're always going to need an outer fabric, a lining, some boning and a piece of cord for the lace up. And for the outer fabric I'm going to use this one. It's a canvas with a cute flower print and I already used it for my wallet and my tote bag but this is actually the project I bought this fabric for and if if you're looking for a fabric then I recommend to definitely take one that is not stretchy and also not too thin because the thinner the fabric the harder it is to work with it. For the lining I'm going to use this white cotton and it doesn't really matter which fabric you use for the lining it should just match the outer fabric so they look good together and it should also be not stretchy and just feel nice on your skin. As boning I'm going to use some zip ties because they are a lot cheaper than normal boning and they work as well. And other materials you can also use is for example a zipper that you can put in the side seam to get in and out of the corset top if you don't want to use the lace up. And you can also just use lots of other decoration. For example you can just do some pretty embroidery or just use lots of stones and sew them on there or even more trim than I'm using so the options are endless. Let's move on to the design. So my plan is to make a sweetheart neckline with a curve that curves up into the strap and the waist is just supposed to be straight and I want to have the lace up in the front but you can also just for example make a normal sweetheart neckline or just straight neckline or whatever you want to do and on the waist it's also very common to curve it down into a V like you see on many ball gowns and to do so you just would have to lengthen the pattern in the correct spot to just make it longer. So right now I can finally cut everything out. First take your lining fabric and press it to remove the wrinkles because this way when you're cutting out your pieces they will end up having the correct size. Now you can start cutting. Cut out the back piece on fold and both front pieces twice. I always cut using a rotary cutter because I think it's more precise and it's also a lot faster than having to pin the pattern on the fabric and cutting it out with scissors. The lining pieces are cut out so now I'm just gonna quickly assemble them to make sure that my pattern works. These are the four seams you're gonna have to sew and I recommend to start with the side seams because they are easier to sew because they are just straight lines. After the side seams are sewn, pin the center front and the side front piece together along the curve. Sew them together while making sure that the curve on your side front piece is a bit gathered to the curve of your center front piece because the curve on your side front piece is a bit stronger. The lining is assembled and it fits great, so now I'm going to cut out all the bodice pieces from the outer fabric. Just like you did with the lining, cut out the back piece on fold and two center front and two side front pieces. If your fabric has a directional print like mine, then always make sure that you're facing your pieces in the same direction, so they won't look weird in the end. The pieces from the outer fabric are cut out as well, so now I'm going to assemble it exactly like I did with the lining. So once again sew both side seams together and afterwards both princess seams. The fabric I'm using really likes to fray, so I zigzag stitched all the edges and if your fabric frays as well, I would definitely recommend to finish the edges. You can also use an overlock if you have one. Afterwards, top stitch the seam allowances towards the front. I top stitch about 3 to 4 mm away from the seam. Before top stitching, always check that your thread tension is correct so your seam will look pretty from the outside and I also always lengthen my stitch length to about 3 mm. The outer bodice is assembled and it's already looking so cute! 
So next, I'm going to work on the boning on the lining. This is the easiest way to create a boning channel and I just feel like a fool to not have done it like this up till now. First, finish the raw edges. Then fold the seam allowances towards the center and sew them down. Make sure to leave as much room as possible in between the seam you're sewing and the other seam. If the boning you want to use is wider than 5mm, I would recommend to make the seam allowances of the lining bigger to be able to sew them down and have enough room to put the boning in the channel. The only place where this method doesn't work is in the center front, so there I mark a line 1cm away from the edge. Cut some strips of fabric that are two and a half centimeters wide, except your boning is wider, then make them wider and fold in both edges in a way you would also fold bias tape. Align this piece on your one centimeter line and top stitch it in place. Cut off the excess and all your boning channels are done. Slide the boning into the channel and mark where it starts to look out. Shorten it on both sides by 2 cm and cut it to size. To cut it I use a pair of pliers because I don't want to ruin my scissors doing this. At the end I use a nail file to finish the edges and make sure that the fabric won't get caught on them. Whenever I'm working with these zip ties I remember that I actually bought them in white but they sent me them in black and I was a bit annoyed so I wrote them an email because I thought let's try and then they actually refunded me and now I always have to think of that whenever I'm working with them. <laughs> All the boning is finished and I just tried on the lining and it fits perfectly. So now I can sew the lining together with the outer fabric. But before I can do that, I have to cut off about two to three millimeters on the top and bottom edge of the lining because this way when you sew the lining and the outer fabric together, the outer fabric folds in a little bit and this way you can't see the lining from the outside. If you want to mark the correct amount on the edges then you can do that but I just eyeballed it and it worked out fine and it's just a lot faster than marking it first. While you're cutting make sure that you're not cutting through your boning if it's inside your boning channels because you don't want to ruin your fabric scissors. It's done so let's put it together with the outer fabric. Put your outer fabric and your lining right sides facing each other and sew along the top edge. Pin the pieces together, making sure that all the seams line up. Sew along the whole top edge and if you want your straps to look out of your garment and not be sewn on top of it, then you can put the straps in place before you sew. If you want to put your straps on in the end, then at least make sure that the area is as wide as your strap. Next, to prevent it from fraying, zigzag stitch the whole top edge or use an overlock. Fold your top open and stitch the seam allowance towards the lining. This will ensure that the lining won't be visible from the outside. While doing this, you're gonna have to stop before you reach the strap point and start again afterwards because you can't sew in this area. The top edge of the top is finished, so next I have to finish the bottom edge and the center front. And I'm going to do it by folding it right sides facing each other and then just sewing it together and turning it inside out. But you can also do it with bias tape, so you would just put the pieces wrong sides facing each other and finish the bottom edge using bias tape. I had to shorten my boning a bit to be able to close up the bottom edge, but if you cut off two centimeters on both sides like I said, then it should work. Flip the piece around so it's right sides together and close up the bottom edge. Leave a gap in the middle of the back to be able to turn it inside out in the end. First pin and then sew it together. While sewing, make sure to push the boning out of the way because you don't want to break a needle. Now you can close up the center front. Make sure that the top and bottom edge seam are both visible from the inside so they won't be visible from the outside in the end. 
Now you can finally turn the whole piece inside out through the opening we left in the back. Close up the opening by hand to get a seamless look. If you don't really care about the seam, you can also just sew it on the machine. I used a ladder stitch to do that and the stitch is very simple. You're basically sewing a straight line going from one fabric to the other. So go through one fabric parallel to the edge and right where you left the first one, go into the other one. The main construction of the top is done, so now all that's left to do is to add the holes for the lace up and the trim around the edges. So I'm just gonna take this trim and sew it around all the edges. First I measure out how long the individual trim pieces have to be and I make sure that they are long enough to wrap around the edges. Then I zigzag stitch it to prevent it from fraying and falling apart and cut off the excess. I decided to have one trim on the bottom edge, one trim from strap to strap and on each side from the center front to the strap point and going up into the strap. At the strap point I sewed a little triangle into the trim because otherwise it was not possible to lay it down on this curve. Then I pin all of the trim properly in place and sew it down by hand and you can also do that with a sewing machine but I think it looks cleaner sewn by hand. I recommend that if you're using trim made of cotton like I am that you're washing your trim before you cut them to size to make sure that it won't shrink. I sew all the trim pieces in place on the bottom and top edge of the trim to ensure that it will stay properly in place. It feels so good to be finally using this trim because I bought it for my first ever sewing project and that was just such a mess. I didn't have a sewing machine back then so I hand sewed the whole project and it was a dress. And I think afterwards I couldn't even wear it because I used a zipper in the back that was too short so I couldn't get in and out. This takes so long but I think it's worth it. I think hand sewing this on there makes it look so professional. Look at this trim. Isn't it just so cute? At this point you can go absolutely wild with decorating your corset so you could add more trim or pearls or embroidery or just paint something on it. But I'm gonna leave it as it is and move on to the next step which is to make the holes for the lace up and there are basically three main options to do the lace up. So the first one is to add loops and those loops would be sewn into the seam in the front so they basically look out in between those two layers and then they would already be there in this step and you wouldn't have to worry about them right now. The second option is to add grommets and to add grommets you would mark some holes along this line and cut holes in there and add grommets. And the third option is to also cut some holes along this line, but you wouldn't finish them with grommets, but with embroidery floss. And that's what I want to be doing. First, you have to figure out how many holes you want to make. I used little pieces of paper to lay them down on the top and actually be able to see how it would look with the amount of holes in it. I decided to add four holes on each side, so I took out my ruler and marked four evenly spaced holes on each side. Then take a pair of scissors and cut the holes into your corset and I can tell you this part is so scary, I was just so scared of messing up all my work. To stabilize the holes a bit you can use a little bit of fabric glue and put it on the edges of the holes. Then I can finally sew in the eyelets, so I just took some embroidery floss and threaded my needle and the trick to not spend hours and hours sewing these eyelets is to take your thread doubled so you can sew twice as fast as you would normally. 
To sew the eyelets, I always start on the inside so the thread tails won't be visible and then I go through the hole towards the outside and through the fabric towards the inside and just repeat that in a circle, tie it in a knot at the end and you have an eyelet. The one good thing about hand sewing is that you can do it everywhere, so I just went a little bit outside while sewing the eyelets. At the end, after trying the corset top on, I just secured the straps in place at the back. It is finished! And I just... I just love it. <laughs> I think it's so cute with all the trim and the eyelets and the print and the fabric. It just fits all so well together and I planned this project like a year ago so it feels just so good to have finally done it. If you enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any future video. I have lots of cool stuff planned but now without further ado let's have a look at the finished top. I hope you liked the video and if you're in the mood to make some matching bottoms for your new top then check out this video where I show you how to make a cute pair of flared shorts.